I have a few other details for the calorimetry experiment. One of those is you'll put a milliliter of water in the bottom of the calorimeter. We have some one mil syringes you can add uh, that precise quantity every time. That's to saturate the inside of the calorimeter with water vapor so that when the combustion reaction, of course, generates CO2 and water, that the water goes into the liquid state because the vapors will already be saturated with water gas. And then the temperature inside the calorimeter is just barely above room temperature at the end of the experiment. So of course, water is gonna have to vaporize. So that, that's how we know the physical state of water at the completion of the reaction is water liquid. Then the other thing we could do is take a wash bottle of water, just distilled water, and rinse through a few times, pour the washings into a beaker or into a flask. And then the same thing, we can even rinse the uh, crucible. And we can even get real you know, fancy and rinse the bottom of the cell. We could rinse a little bit of water um, into a container. And then from there, what we can do is take one of our burettes and fill it with um, this precise quantity of, or this precise concentration of sodium carbonate. And if you read in the PAR manual, it says to make up that particular normality. That's really just a fancy word similar to molarity. But that concentration um, added to a burette allows us to have a correction factor for however many milliliters of solution it takes to titrate the washings using phenolphthalein as an indicator. Just add a couple drops of phenolphthalein to your rinsing water rinses. And what we're really titrating for is a uh, nitric acid, which is going to form in the presence of nitrogen, oxygen, and water vapor, which could all be present inside the calorimeter. Of course, we flushed, and uh, we're going to flush that bomb uh, three times before we uh, take our final fill with oxygen to then uh, run our experiment. So we're going to make sure that we have a really high oxygen environment, really low nitrogen environment. So we probably won't observe a whole lot of, of, uh, um, of that sodium carbonate needed to titrate our washing. In fact, we say if it's less than a milliliter for a given compound, you can then skip it for future trials because it becomes just more of a, an error prone task than anything. Okay, so then the other thing to mention is if your compound you're combusting contains nitrogen in it, then you might see a bigger correction. So if you're combusting a compound that has nitrogen in it, then you're likely going to see a larger quantity and you're probably gonna have to do that titration each time. The other thing I wanted to mention is the pellet press. So our pellet press here has a couple of parts. So it has this part here where we're actually gonna make the pellet in here. So what we would do is grind up whatever sample we have into hopefully a powder that works the best. Then we're gonna take, add some of that powder. What I usually try to do is fill this cell here to the top, press down lightly, and then refill once more. And usually that's a pretty close to a gram quantity. So refill a second time, and then that time, pulverize it down, maybe give it a pound or two. And then once you have your pellet here, your pellet's gonna be in this press here. It's gonna be all the way to the bottom. It's gonna be pretty hard to get it out. So then what I would do, and, and notice how I began with this beveled edge up. That's not super crucial that we get this right, but that's a little bit helpful if that bevel edge is on the top as opposed to the bottom, which has a more flat face. So we would flip this over, and we would actually flip it over into the pre-weighed and pre-washed out sample cell or crucible and what we would do is just press that lightly what you're gonna have to do is get this lined up hopefully you have two hands and then what you want to do is just tap lightly so you don't re-crush the pellet once it falls into the crucible and so you should then have your uh, sample and your crucible ready to go for your next trial so a few things are just make sure to pre-weigh the crucible ahead of time, make sure it's good and cleaned out. That one wasn't very clean that I started with, but make sure it's cleaned out before you begin. And then you're ready to go with your next trial with a new compound with your pellets. So remember, we'll use pre-made pellets for benzoic acid and make our own for any other pellets we need throughout the experiment. One of the tasks is to combust a food item. So on the second day of the experiment, if you wanna bring in some sort of a food, something you can think about making a pellet out of, like potato chips work pretty well, um, like fattier types of crackers work pretty well. Things that are kind of dry, um, like a saltine doesn't work very good in terms of making a pellet out of that, but like a Ritz cracker usually works a little bit better. 
Um, usually things that don't have a high salt content, so probably not something, uh, you know, like the salt does become a little bit of an issue. So we'll usually see a salt residue in the, cow, in the sample cell once we're finished that we may have a little bit of a complication with. So if you're choosing something, maybe something relatively that you can make a pellet out of that maybe doesn't have a whole lot of salt in it is a good choice. But we can try to combust just about anything and see what happens and kind of go from there. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Thank you.